Hey, it's Sean and Mike, brew-dudes.com. We're outside, the winds of change are blowing through, or yep. it's a thunderstorm coming close. We've got uh, aircraft overhead. Someone's deciding to uh, take his uh, flying lessons out on us. That's camera C. That's camera C. Oh, hey, how you doing? We'll uh, edit that in. Anyway, we've got beer in front of us, we're tasting it. Uh, Michael, what is this beer? So this is another small batch of mine. This is a uh, small batch Berliner Weiss. Ooh. Well, Berliner Weiss inspired because it's really not like traditionally brewed. It's yeah. a kettle soured version of Berliner. So uh, why don't I just give you the quick rundown on, on how I pulled this baby off. That would so, be great. So this is a two gallon batch. Um, and the main recipe was, so it's going to be a low gravity beer. The starting gravity on this. Two gallons in liters is? is 7.6 liters of course so it's a two two gallon 7.6 liter batch my starting gravity was 1042 um, the recipe is one and a half pounds of pills malt or 680 grams one pound of torrified wheat or 400, 450 grams and a quarter pound of flaked oats or 110 grams um, so the way i made this was i mashed this sucker in at uh, 151 or 66 uh, degrees c and i only mashed for 40 minutes uh, but once I had the mash done, and I and I um, I did brew in a bag, right? So once I had all the wort collected in the pot, mm. I brought it up to just about boiling, just to sort of knock out anything that was was in the beer, uh, in the in, uh, from the mash, bugs in the grain, um, microbes in the grain, and then I pitched uh, from uh, Omega Yeast the their Lactobacillus blend. I believe yep. it's uh, 605 is the number. So I pitched that into the kettle with the lid on and let it sit for about two days in the warm garage to kettle sour. Uh, at the end of that souring phase, I gave it a, a quick pH check and the pH was like 3.5. So it actually had soured wow. more than I thought it would, yeah. more than I intended it to, but it was fine. Then I brought it back to a boil and, um, and actually I added a little bit of water because I, I had about two gallons and I knew I was going to boil some off. So I added water and I boiled it to kill everything because I didn't want it to continue to sour later on. I was happy with where it was. Uh, and that was my plan all along anyway. Cool. Um, and then I pitched the Lalaman Kolsch yeast because I really don't like the Kolsch that it makes, but I figured <laughs> some of the esters it throws out, especially if I fermented it a little bit warm right now, yep. it would probably complement the, the, um, the sour, soured base, if you will. Um, I did add like a couple pellets of cluster just for fun because it felt like the right thing to do. But it's not important at that point because I really wasn't counting on any more lactobacillus activity to be inhibited. So um, just a little bit to balance, like seven grams. And um, yeah, and then it fermented uh, and I, I kegged it up and um, and we're drinking it. And so it finished off at 10.09. Yeah, it was the final. At, uh, so it's about f a little over 4.3%. Uh, so a little higher than a typical Berliner Weiss. A little Weiss. higher than yeah. I would expect it, but, yeah. you know, but I think we're used to it. Yeah. I don't think we, we think care. We can handle it. <laughs> I don't know. I need those 3% beers. Mm. Um, on the nose, nice. Um, I think that uh, the lactic acid is something I'm picking up, along with some soft multi notes. And uh, yeah, it's almost got like a kind of like a warty. Yeah, a little you know. bit warty. It's actually almost got that. Um, there is like that lactobacillus. Uh, the best way to describe it is there's a yogurt yeah. ness to yeah, it, to it, which we also noticed uh, when we used that Lelaman sour pitch yep. uh, last year as a kettle sour, mm. right? So, so it's interesting that lactobacillus sort of comes through in your mind. You actually register that lactobacillus activity as, as yogurt, um, yep. which is kind of cool. And then through the flavor, it's nice and tart, no funk, no weirdness. Yeah, so my wife really likes this actually. She she does not like it sour beers in general. Yeah. Because she always complains that there's like a band-aid flavor to mm -hmm. almost every sour beer. Yep. And she's not wrong because a lot of those use a phenol positive yeast blend of True. some sort. Um, but this, it's very super clean and it's yep. just essentially a lactobacillus Kolsch fermentation profile. Um, so she does actually like this, which is nice, because then I'd be inspired to maybe do a little bit more of this. Yes, true. And I think that's the big benefit of uh, the kettle souring anyway. You don't have, you know, those other flavors that come along with typical yeah. sour beers that come through a fermentation, right? Yep. It's like, and that's a post-boil fermentation. Yep. This is, it's like, it's sour. The, the sour note is just that. Yeah. Just a tartness. Yep. And it, it's very drinkable, sir. Yeah. 
for sure. Now, so talking this, about drinkability. Yes. So this is just the base beer. Then we have this purple nonsense. Purple nonsense. <laughs> yeah, we'll call this purple nonsense. <laughs> what the heck is this? So this uh, traditionally, and you know, I'm not speaking from experience here, but from what I've read and heard about, traditionally, a mm. really, you know, Berliner Weiss would also possibly be served with uh, some simple syrups, namely raspberry and or Woodruff syrups. Yep to sort of sweeten it and also cut the acidity a little bit and then add a flavor dimension to mm. it. So um, I wanted to try something and based on what I had frozen in my pantry without having to go to the store, um, I, took, I took a pound of blueberries and I just let them, they were frozen, so I let them thaw and I zipped them really good hard in the blender. I strained that mm. and then with what came out the other end of the, the straining, <laughs> I, made a, I went ahead and I made a simple syrup with sugar and water and then added that strained material to it until I had like what I felt was a predominant blueberry, strong enough blueberry character. Then I've added about say 10 or 20 milliliters or two ounces or so. I don't know if those numbers even come close to equaling each other, but I'm um, just basing it on volume. Good guess. Um, and we put some beer on top of it. So now what you actually have is like a purplish, it's not super strange, so there's some, some chunky material in there, a little bit grittiness, but the Between point is, friends. I just wanted to try it, yeah. you know? But you got this nice purple-ish Berliner Weiss now that's uh, blueberry infused yep. to some extent. And it does cut away on the, on the, the sourness, the tartness of it, sure. And then, yeah. like you said, there is uh, that flavor component. It's not overly sweet. It's just there's a, fru yeah. a fruity blueberry note. Like, yeah, you know. I think the things with the thing is with blueberries is that when you play with them in other types of recipes and stuff, if the blueberries aren't super strong on their own to begin with, um, you really need some acidity to keep their flavor profile yeah. the same, and it works really well in this application. There you go. So, um, yeah, it's it's highly drinkable this way. Now, you know, we've diluted. Maybe now it's four percent or maybe three point nine percent. Now we're getting closer to the actual style. What are you doing to me? I know, but it's great. But this is good. This is good. I think I would just as well drink the base beer. Yeah, I think so um, too. So, but it is nice to try a traditional alternative, mm -hmm. at least uh, in practice. The sad thing is, is this was only a another one of my half batch experiments. Yes, and. Um, it's going fast because it's hot out. Yep. And this type of beer is super refreshing when it's hot like this. True that. So, yeah, that's the other thing about these experimental batches. Sometimes you'll really yeah. hit one. Yeah. And you'll say, "Darn it, I wish I had more yeah. to drink." Right. Yep. Yeah. That's the, you roll the dice. Exactly. You roll the dice. Anyway, exactly. so Berliner Weiss. A little if sour. If you're into um, refreshing beers for the summertime, if you happen to be living on the northern hemisphere. Now is the great time to brew them, and like uh, Mike told you, you can use a uh, you know kettle souring technique to bring the uh, tartness to the beer, and uh, probably cuts down on the amount of time it takes to actually go from brew date to package date to enjoy date. Yep, goes pretty uh, fast. So, and uh, if you're smart and you're confident, you can make a good version of it. Make more than two gallons. That's just you know what we learned today. Yep. So hopefully you dug the Berliner Weiss recipe and our tasting notes. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We post a video every single week and uh, you can always check us out on our blog, Brew Dash Dudes. For John and Mike, from that blog, brewdashdudes.com, brew on. Cheers.